we're talking this morning about having the expectation. This is what I feel like the impartation of the house is today. An, ex, an expectation of great joy. An expectation of great joy. First Peter 1, now we live with, say it with me, great expectation. Now that we live with great expectation, I believe that during this series, one of the things that God is doing is restoring great expectation in the house. To everyone who was hurt, disappointed, abandoned, somebody walked out on you in 2022 means that God is about to walk into your life at the end of this year. I believe that the expectation and hope that you placed in other people that was taken away from you, God is restoring that and going to give you great expectations of great joy. Peter goes on to say in verse 6, so be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. And what I love about this, y'all, is Peter is not preaching to people that have not been through anything in life. Have you ever thought that like, oh, it's easy for that person to have joy. I know what they make. It's easy for that person to have joy. Their kids act behave for the five minutes that I saw them in the restaurant. It's easy for that person. Peter is not preaching this to a church that has it all together. Peter is preaching great expectation of great joy to people that are walking through extremely difficult circumstances. And so that's who I want to preach this word to. I want to preach this to somebody that is walking through some stuff, that is walking through some pain, that isn't going to have the perfect Christmas. God says to you, great expectation of great joy. Reminds me of the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, and there were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were, they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I give you good news that will cause great joy among all the people. Life is false to formula in many ways. And I know preachers try to give you little simple things to, to make it sticky. But this one, this one just makes a lot of sense to me. Joy, if there is a formula for joy, here it is. It's Jesus first others second, and yourself last. And that's not what the, the world flips that around. The world tries to get you to have eos. <laughs> the message of the world, put yourself first. Put yourself first. If you just put yourself first. I'm not saying ignore yourself, but Jesus first. Others second, yourself last. The rest of that verse in Peter is, so be truly glad there's wonderful joy ahead. Just stop there, Peter. Just stop that. Stop writing. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, Peter, I told you to stop. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Peter, can we, can we back up to the beginning of the verse? It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. See, joy is not the absence of trial. It is the growing of your faith during trial. I don't know what you're walking through, but you're growing. God sees gold in you, and he's pulling the gold to the surface. These shepherds, these shepherds are out in the field. They're tending sheep. It's an, it's an, it's an ordinary night, and they're just doing hard work. Those, those two things, do you, do you not feel like in some ways we've lost those things? The power of ordinary Right? The, again, the message of our culture is that every moment in your lives has to be spectacular. If there's not fireworks going off, going off behind you, if there's not like angels singing in front of you, like every, if, do, do you feel that sometimes? Like every meal has to be spectacular. Every date night has to be spectacular. Can I preach to somebody in the house the power of ordinary? The shepherds were just, you know what they were doing when God showed up? They were doing hard work. 
There's another thing that I could preach a little bit about. The power of hard work. Do you know when God will show up in your life sometimes? It's when you are just doing ordinary hard work. When you're filling out the expense report, when you're sweeping the floor, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're there early, when you're turning out the lights late, sometimes God specializes in showing up in ordinary, mundane moments. And then they, and then they saw Jesus. This spectacular moment, Jesus shows up in the middle of ordinary. But here's what I really love. I love that this, the shepherds experience this glory, the angels, the star get to go be the first people to see the risen Savior. But here's, here's what's really interesting to me. The shepherds, as far as we know, don't write a book. The shepherds don't go on tour. The shepherds go back to being shepherds. We don't even know their name. We don't know that they got any glory out of it. We don't know that their influence elevated. We don't know anything about these shepherds except that in a moment of ordinary circumstance, the power of God shone through to them and it changed everything. Can I remind somebody today that your circumstances don't have to change for joy to invade your life? We were, I was, I was camping a couple of weeks ago before Thanksgiving, and I know there's better times to go camping than when it's 30, but it just, it seemed like a good idea. And, and I and I thought, like, I knew I didn't have the gear, right? I knew that, that there's, these, there's these sleeping bags that are rated for below 30 degrees, below 20 degrees, below 20 below, all that stuff. I, I knew I didn't have the gear. And so I tried to make up for in volume what I didn't have in, in actuality. And so we got the air mattresses, we had the blankets, we had the sleeping bags, and we had this blazing fire. And, and so we left the fire and I, I went to bed in the tent and it didn't take but about 45 minutes that I was cold, y'all. I was, I was freezing cold and I'm piling on the blankets and I'm just laying there. And, and I had, I had a lot, it wasn't good prayer time, but I had a lot of prayer time. And my prayer was something like this, God, if you made the sun stand still for Joshua, then you can make it come up for me. So I was just like praying, God, would you, would you send, the, and then in the middle of the night, anybody ever have that, you know, it's that, it's that moment in the middle of the night when you got to use the rest room and, and like it's like am I going to be in more pain just laying here or getting up and so I finally got up and went outside and I was like oh at least I get to uh, experience the fire that's outside not a not a spark in the fire it was completely done so I was freezing out there I was freezing and I'm just I'm laying there and sleeping and waking up and praying and 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 I got through the night and I got home and when we got home I texted somebody because on my birthday they had given me this jet boil camping little camp camping stove, and I'd been wanting one of these, and I was so excited about it, and it did give me uh, piping hot coffee in the morning, and I was very uh, excited and thankful for that, and so I texted them, I was like, hey, thank you so much for that gift, and they texted me back, they said, oh, that's awesome, did you see the emergency thermal sleeping bag that came with it? I said, I said, no, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> when I was laying there all night, cold, <laughs> miserable, praying, God help me prayers, the very thing that I needed <laughs> was 10 feet, 10 feet from me, and I didn't even know it. What if... What if the very thing that you need today to cause great joy in your life is already within your reach? Great joy in your life is always found in Jesus. It's not found in the stuff that you have 
or the stuff that you could get, and it's not found in the circumstances of your life. Luke 2, verse 10, starting in verse 10, let's read it. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to the people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. I don't know if you saw it here, but when the angel came and said that there's good news of great joy for all the people, immediately after that, the angel says where that joy is found. It's found in the Lord. It's found in the Messiah. And so great joy in our lives always comes from Jesus But what I find interesting is that whenever we try to pursue joy in our lives, we typically, obviously we typically don't go there, but we honestly have an incorrect conception in our minds of what joy actually is, apart from what this passage says that it is. My hunch would be that we think of joy as a concept to be grasped and a concept to be understood, rather than a person to be known. And that's what this passage is saying. It's not saying Good news of great joy just so you can know it. And that's why their response later was, let us go see. Because it had to do with the person who was being born, not the thing to be understood. And in this moment, another, another kind of interesting thing that I think comes from this passage is that the shepherds were not, as Pastor Doug said, they were not the, the, the cream of the crop in society. They were not the people who had the best job and the best thing. Because typically, typically, News like this in Israel that was about the Savior coming to the world would come to one of, pretty much one of two people, either the the Pharisees, the people who were ministering in the temple, or to the king of that time. So for the news to come to the shepherds was totally wrong in their current society, meaning that they would have been looking to someone else for this joy that came specifically to them. Somebody needs to hear this today, that you and your situation, you don't have to wait for somebody else to bring you the joy. The joy has come to you. The joy is an opportunity for you to partake in. It's not a thing to be understood. It's a person to be known. And he's made a way for you to know him today. And he's made a way for you to have great joy. Our souls long for joy. And the question that we have to battle with day in and day out is where will we find it? Where will we find it? If we know it's in Jesus, then why do we go to all these other things in our lives? Thomas Aquinas, a theologian, a significant theologian in church history, says this about joy. Man cannot live without joy. Therefore, when he is deprived of true spiritual joys, it is only necessary that he become addicted to carnal pleasures. I want to challenge you Because most of the time in our lives, we go for something and we go to try to to try to grasp joy in one thing or another. And you should not be surprised when it falls out from under your feet. Because the true joy in our life can only come from Jesus. And the moment that we set that to the side, we are giving ourselves over to what Aquinas calls the carnal pleasures. And we're asking the carnal pleasures of life to give us something that they don't even have. And so we have to focus on Jesus in in, in every situation. Uh, You know who who experienced this in their life? Uh, Actually, in a movie, I would say. So you you could argue if it was a real life or not. But uh, Ebenezer Scrooge experienced this in The Christmas Carol. It's kind of a classic Christmas movie or a Christmas production production or what you have. But um, essentially, if you remember, there were three ghosts that came to visit Ebenezer Scrooge because basically the dude's life was centered around money and his business partner who had passed basically came and told him, hey, you know, your life's gonna fall apart, but I'm gonna send you, he said, I made an appointment for you to have an appointment with these three ghosts, and they're gonna help you see what's true. And the first ghost, if you remember, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas past showed him that as a child, he had everything that he needed to live a joyful life in the future. But something came in at the end, do you guys remember what it was? that stole that joy from him, and it was money. 
and his life was totally revolving around money. So then the ghost of Christmas past leaves, and the ghost of Christmas present comes. And what does the ghost of Christmas present do? Shows him what other people think of him currently, that he had no idea. He had no idea that they were thinking. And then that ghost of Christmas present only lasts a little bit of time because it only lasted for the present day. And so that one left. And do you remember what the ghost of Christmas future came to show him? Came to show him the hell that his life would be if he didn't choose to find his joy in something else. And at the moment he wakes up, he has a decision to make because he has now been enlightened to the true joy that is within his reach, just like Pastor Doug just said, the true joy that's within his reach. And what does Ebenezer Scrooge do? He goes and he gives away money. He throws a dinner for somebody because what he thought that he had was not really what he wanted because the real joy that he had was founding something else other than the carnal pleasures of life because the carnal pleasures of life can never give you the true joy that you're asking for. And in the same way that he had a decision to make, we have a decision to make too. Because if great joy is truly found in Jesus, then we have to bring a response to that truth. And even the shepherds show us the right way to respond. In verse 15, when the angels had left them and returned to heaven, because the, super, the, 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 the good, spiritual, nice, and crazy moment will always stop. And then when rubber meets the road, you have to make a decision about how you just encountered God. What are you gonna do with that? The shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what happened, which the Lord had made known to us. They hurried off, they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph in the, and the baby who was lying in the manger. Listen to that language one more time. Let's go straight to Bethlehem. And they hurried. If you had a question in your mind today, I'm here to tell you that joy is worth pursuing right now. Joy is worth pursuing right now. And the shepherds, in that moment, the angel leaves, the heavenly hosts are gone, and they look at each other, and they say, let us go now. Not let me make sure my sheep are taken care of so that my career doesn't fall apart so that everything is left perfectly. That was their livelihood. Their livelihood was taking care of those sheep. Their livelihood was in that field. But once they knew about the possibility of great joy in their life, there was nothing that could keep them from leaving that to go for the, where the real joy was. And in that same way, that should be our response to the joy that is found only in Jesus. And so my question for you today is that if joy is always and only found in Jesus, what are you willing to leave behind to pursue him? Did we take the offering yet? I, we, Kristen and I brought our year-end offering. <laughs> I got so confused reading that thing up here, I forgot to throw it in the bucket. I don't, yeah, I'm just... <laughs> Sometimes the most epic and profound gifts come in simple packages. You know everything that glitters is in gold. Anybody get fruitcake for Christmas in a nice bag? <laughs> the gifts are also delivered by everyday people who have everyday influence. No, 1969, my, my dad came around the corner on Oak Avenue with a, with a paper bag. Now, I was used to paper bags. If you take, see pictures of my dad when we went to the beach, he brought his clothes in a paper bag. <laughs> we didn't stay overnight. Blue-collar family, go into one of those bathrooms slash changing rooms, come out all oiled up with his bag and his work clothes. Sometimes he would whistle. I would run home from the ballpark. He'd give me a bag and say, bring this to Carbones. I didn't look in the bag. <laughs> I 
He'd say, here's a bag. Drop it off at Uncle Scary's house. I didn't look in the bag. I just dropped it off. So I was used to paper bags. You know, when they ask me now, is it paper or, what is it, plastic? I'm thinking, like, what is wrong with you? I want paper. Well, my dad walked around the corner. It was 1969. Give me, let me give you perspective here. My dad was a blue-collar worker. My dad was an everyday Joe. 1969, gas was 35 cents a gallon. Monthly rent was 135 bucks. Milk was a buck ten. Minimum wage was 160. A factory worker made a little bit over three bucks an hour. I love baseball, and I wanted so desperately this one glove. I remember telling them, Dad, I, Dad, I got to have that glove. I'm 10 years old. I, I mean, they're going to draft me next year. I mean, I got to have this glove. He basically told me, don't bank on it in his own unique way, which cannot be shared on this stage. <laughs> so I kind of let it go. But I'll never forget the day when my dad walked down the field carrying a paper bag. Opened it up, gave it to me. He said, you better take care of this kid. And it's a kangaroo skin glove. This cost almost a hundred bucks in 1969. Guy making $3 an hour. Delivered in a package that he could have dialed up. He could have made look real good. But just gave it to me and told me to take care of it. I'm 64 years of age. If any of my kids or grandkids touch this glove... We'll get rid of them and make another that looks just like them. <laughs> but that many years ago, over 50 years ago, when I look at this glove, I'm rocked by the sacrifice of my loving father. You think I'd give a rip that it came in a paper bag? The verse here says, in verse 17, upon seeing this miraculous sign, the shepherds recounted what had just happened. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story were astonished by what they were told. I'm telling you the story about a kangaroo skin glove. How much more do we need to tell the story about the greatest gift ever given if I'm reflecting on a glove, how much more need I be reflected on a baby in the manger that hung on a cross 30 years later so that I could avoid hell and get to heaven? Shame on me for getting distracted. And by in this Christmas season, may the joy of our salvation be restored. I love the term here in the Passion Translation. It says they recounted. They, they, they told the story. They gave the details. They described it. They used the uniqueness of their personalities. No bells and whistles. Sometimes we think joy is, is, is giddy and, and, and frivolous, and that don't look good on me. It looks good on some. It looks good on a few But goik, goy, listen to me, that rhymes with joy. That's where that came from when you're old, okay? Goy, joy, okay? But joy is something that goes deeper than giddiness. What we're asking you today is just take the uniqueness of your DNA, of your makeup, of who you are, and just add some joy to Jesus. So in this season, 
Might we not revisit this gift? The gift of Jesus. The gift of this baby. What, what's your story? What's your plan to share it? Let's just add some joy. They spread the word. It, see, it wasn't announced to royalty, high social status, high influencers. They would probably be preoccupied. But everyday Joes just like us, shepherds, common day pe people, those simple enough to listen, respond, and act. Has life become so complicated that we're living distracted? Or can we keep it simple? Can we keep the main thing the main thing? Can we thank God with joy for the son that's talking to us now that wasn't talking to us yesterday and not be rocked or, 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 or depressed because they're not living exactly the same way? You see, joy sees it, believes it, and anticipates it. We're dropping several bags of money on the grandkids this year. None of them are opening them up and getting coal or, 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 or fruitcakes. Isn't that a song, Adam? Oh, I thought he had a song, right? Fruitcakes. If you're going to wear those pants, you got to have a song. on fruitcakes. <laughs> you see, there was everyday Joes about their everyday business positioned for a fresh revelation. Listen to me. What's a fresh revelation? A fresh revelation. This Christmas season. Can I tell you about mine? Check out this picture. This is Frankie Canada's fresh revelation. I was standing out in the foyer after all the rugrats had been dismissed, and I turned around, and I saw the bells and whistles of that Christmas tree, and I saw those packages, and I said, boy, is Christmas awesome. And then I took a look around the corner, and I saw the manger. God, forgive me if I'm distracted with the bells and whistles. And I don't see the simplicity, the simplicity of the package for the Savior of the world. And I don't think it's ironic above they put Connect Center. If you want to connect this Christmas, get acquainted with the joy that comes in a life surrendered to Jesus. You heard the story. These shepherds were appalled. Do you think an angel showed up? I'm here to tell you, you're somebody's angel this Christmas. You're somebody's angel. You may not behave like it. You may not have the wings or the decor, but you're somebody's angel. They were ignited by that revelation. They left glorifying and praising God. See, joy isn't an event, people. It's a lifestyle. And I'm praying that this season, that you take, take the words of what David Jeremiah says on this quote. When our lives are filled with peace, faith, and joy, people will want to know what we have. Listen. They say misery loves comfort. I'm here to tell you joy is contagious. You can find any miserable person around any water cooler or coffee machine that you could hunt down. But all it takes is one cat walking in there with the joy of Jesus to change the atmosphere. So restore to me the joy of my salvation and make me willing to obey you, it says, 
in Psalm 51, 12. I close with this. And then my challenge to you is this. Can you revisit the time when you looked at the manger a little different? Could you push rewind? Fight through the circumstances, the situations, the heartache, the pain, the disappointments. And be reminded of that time. You see, 69, it was a glove. 79, it was a Jesus for this guy. And when I went to Christmas Village on Church Street in Torrington, Connecticut, I didn't give a rip about the reindeer with the red nose painted. I found my way back to a manger. And I said, how did I miss this all these years. Mother Teresa says it this way. Joy is prayer. Joy is strength. Joy is love. Joy is a net of love by which you can catch souls. I want to catch some souls this Christmas season. How about you? Would you stand with me real quick? And can we commit together Can we commit together that we're going to bring the uniqueness of the relationship of this Jesus to our little worlds? We're going to present it by being us and not trying to be anybody else. We're not bringing flaky or giddy, but if that's you, bring it. We're just bringing who you see an everyday joy that comes through the life of an everyday Joe. Are you willing to bring joy? Bow your heads one second. If you would say with me this, Frank, by the grace of God, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to step into it. This next week, I got a week before Christmas. They're going to see a twinkle in my eye. They're going to see something different, a skip in my walk. And by the grace of God, I'm going to look for opportunities to insert joy into my witness in this Christmas season. And by the grace of God, Father, I'm asking you to help me do it. If that's your heart, and if that's what you're saying, on the count of three, raise your hand and ask Pastor Doug to come back up and pray over you that you will be gospel carriers of joy this Christmas season. One, two, gospel carrier, are you ready? Three, help us, Father, help us, Father. Father, we just ask that you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, would help us to carry that joy. Help us to be bringers of joy. Help us in this situation, whatever it takes to extend, whether it's words, whether it's uh, dollars, whatever it is, help us to be bringers of joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, you may be wondering why I'm saying amen, Pastor Doug. <laughs> why well, I have a mic walking yeah. through the church. Yeah. Um, we actually today, this is this is Tony, everybody. Sorry to bring you in here right in front of everybody in this moment. Um, but we, we as a church believe that this is a season uh, that the Lord wants to bless people. And we've been praying all week about someone to bless. And you, I don't even know if you've ever been here <laughs> with us before. Uh, we placed an Instacart order, Pastor Doug, uh, while service was going what on. What did we and order? It, it's uh, Drinks, I think. Yeah, we'll give some to everybody in the lobby afterwards. <laughs> but uh, Tony uh, actually took some time to pick up our order and bring it here. And we wanted to go a, a little bit above and beyond the tip for, for you for this year. I mean, we're right here at Christmas. And I don't know your situation of life, anything about you, but we just pray that the Lord would send the right person and that we would be able to bless somebody right here in church today. So I don't know if anybody else is feeling led. We're going to give our tip on uh, the app and some other stuff. But if anybody else feels led to just add some tip to, to Tony for this season and bless bless Tony and any family and friends that she has and everything like that, we just bring bring some extra tip money down right here and bring it. You can bring it to me or Pastor Doug right you gonna here. Lead, you going to lead the way? What gonna you got? Le- I'm going to lead the way. All right. But I've got a Christmas card. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And this Christmas card is from us. And in that Christmas card is uh, over $500 um, for you for this Christmas season, plus everything all these other people are bringing. Because we believe that the Lord 
wanted to bless you today. And you had no idea when you got in your car that, that this was happening, but we just want to thank you and, and bless you in this moment. Y'all can, y'all can keep coming, and y'all can give it up for Tony and what the Lord's doing in this moment. Hey, one more time. Can we give it up for Tony, and can we just by our applause bless her? Yeah, y'all keep coming. This is a lo- longer line than I ever thought. This is so cool. This is so cool. And here's the thing, church family. This kind of thing doesn't have to stop here. This can start here. Let's be contagious spreaders of joy this Christmas. Amen? Let's be contagious spreaders of joy. Hey, if earlier today you said yes to Jesus, make sure on your way out, do a U-turn. We want to uh, put something in your hands. I'm sorry, not a U-turn this time. It's at the Connect Center right in the back. Grab that. And then if you this is your first time or first time in a long time, make sure you turn in that Connect card at our Connect Center. We want to connect with you. Make sure you bring somebody next week. We'll see you at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve or 10 o'clock on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Multiply Church. I hope you enjoyed the service today. And if you decided to follow Jesus, we would love to know. All you have to do is text ALIVE to 94000. We have some resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey of following Him. Well, we're one week closer to Christmas. It is. It's so close now. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. You make sure you get your shopping done. Yes, I think like bells are going to toll soon. Get all those presents underneath the tree. So you got to look at Put them there. Your, yeah, and then look at your 10 and 4, four and 10. And shoot down all those bogeys that are trying to shoot you back. If you want Top Gun Maverick for Christmas. Yes. Is it 6 and 10? I... If you know the right numbers, post them in the chat, because we don't. Mm-mm. Yeah. But Christmas is almost here. Make sure you're ready. You know one of the things you could do for us for Christmas? Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Subscribe, We yes. almost have a 1,000 people. You could be number 1,000. You could. Help that's us like, cross that line. And that's like winning, being the 1,000th. That's right. You never know. You could be it. You could be the one. Do it. Yeah. Have a very, very, very... Merry, almost, not quite, but maybe soon, Christmas.